Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Tuesday morning. It is early out here this morning. Still kind of wet and damp. We've been getting quite a bit of rain here in northwest Arkansas, and we have needed it. It has been extremely dry, but the grass is growing. Check this out. I have got to cut my grass here soon. It's starting to get the little seeds and stuff at the top. My uh, plants, though, are doing pretty good. Loving all this rain, the crepe myrtles. Check that out. They're starting to bud and get little flowers. This one right here, it's got quite a bit. It's looking all beautiful, looking healthy. Also, the plants over there are doing really, really good. I got a whole bunch of hummingbirds out here this morning. I just filled up their uh, little sugar water uh, about two days ago. And uh, man, they I must have made a good mixture or something. I had 10 of them out here this morning on uh, two little hummingbird feeders. They were fight, fighting and playing and stuff. We got some really beautiful color ones too. We got some reds and some greens. We got, let me see if I can zoom in if it'll let me. Let's see here. Zoom in here. Look at that one with the green on it. Oh, there's some more. I was about to turn you all around, but they're dive bombing. They're so fast, it's hard to keep up with. But they are definitely playing. I love that in the mornings. That is my favorite thing is to sit right there and watch the hummingbirds sit there and eat and play. Awesome. Nature is amazing. Look at that. We got two of them right now and there's another one hovering is about to come in and fight a little dive bomb. Let me see here. Pretty cool. So that's what I get to look at every morning before I go to work. But today, I also got to unload this truck from Florida. I have not had time. I went yesterday and got some gas. The vein of my existence. Oh, we're still zoomed in. Let's see here. Oh, there we go. But I went and got some more gas. That right there is like gold. But all of this is from my Florida trip. The dust from these uh, dirt roads. That's how dry it's been. Even with my cover rolled back. Still gets a lot of dust in here. But I ended up getting my compressor that I had there in Florida back from my old neighbor. He still had it. And then all of this is food processing stuff. You see the tape and the label makers and all of that. Right over there I got my grinder. And this right here is actually a DeWalt planer that I got. So I got all of my food processing stuff from my brother's house in Florida whenever I went down there. I got all LEM stuff and uh, some pretty good equipment. And then I also have around an LEM dehydrator. This right here is where I make all of my jerky and like banana chips and dehydrated vegetables and fruits and stuff like that. So I'm excited to have all of that back here with me now. I took it all to my brothers. I got rid of most of my stuff whenever I left Florida because I couldn't fit it on the trip and where I was headed there in Texas. But I didn't want to get rid of all my food processing, my food processing stuff because I knew at some point I would buy more land, get back into the country, and start processing my own food again. So I sent it down to my brothers and had my brothers keep it for safekeeping until I was ready for it. And being that I ended up making that trip and driving all the way down to Florida, I decided that I would go ahead and pick that up. I also picked up my, my deer mount that I have, the first deer that I ever uh, got. And it's a nice uh, Georgia 8 point. So I picked that up. It's going to look real good in the cabin right there. So that and just a couple odds, other odds and ends stuff, uh, extension cords, some Visqueen. Stuff like that that I had down there. I'm going to use the Visqueen to kind of close off the loft area and stuff of the cabin whenever I start the uh, renovation there for the bathroom. Or renovation, actually adding a new bathroom. So, went in and got all that, so that's real good. But 
One of the main reasons why I need to get it cleaned out today, and it is important, the newest generator that I got, it's the Predator 4550. Um, it's been a solid little generator as far as running what I need. The problem is, is it's been having issues. The pull cord broke and I had to fix it, so now a little bit of the cord hangs out. But here recently, it's been shutting off uh, kind of randomly and don't want to crank again. And I've changed the oil. I change the oil in it about every two weeks because it's my primary generator. And uh, keep the air filter clean and stuff like that, especially with it being so dusty around here. But here the other day, when Margarita was here, it shut off about two days ago and it won't crank back up. Well, it's only about three and a half months old. So I thought I had the warranty on it. I thought I got the extended warranty from Harbor Freight, but apparently I didn't, which is rare, especially with it being my main generator. I don't know exactly why I didn't get it. So I went there yesterday after I went to the dentist and uh, asked him, you know, did I get the extended warranty and all that? And they said no, and it's actually been too long to take it back. Ah. Uh. But the lady there was real, real nice, and she said that she gets off at 11 o'clock today. And if I could get the generator in by 11 o'clock, she would exchange it for me as long as I bought the extended warranty on it. The extended warranty is about $130. It's about a $600 generator. So it's a no-brainer. I said, yes, ma'am, I will. So I'm going to get that loaded up this morning, and I'm actually going to make it work. Um... It's kind of hard to do that in the middle of the week with my schedule, but um, to save $400, I, I think I'll make it happen. Come on. So I'm going to get that generator loaded up, head to Russellville and go to the Harbor Freight and get that done. And because being that that one's been broke down, I've been using the big generator, the 9,000 watt one, and that sucker drinks a gallon an hour. And boy, let me tell you, whoo, that's a whole lot. Now, last night, I did run my smaller generator, my little 2250, um, because the weather has actually been pretty nice, and I didn't have to run the air conditioner. And when I don't have to run the air conditioner, that 2250 runs everything that I need, and that one only drinks about a gallon of gas every 15, 16 hours. It saves me a lot of money. So I am glad that the temperature is starting to cool down, because it's going to save me a fortune in the long run. So, but... I still need my middle generator for whenever it is hot or I need to run something a little bit bigger and uh, without spending a gallon an hour on the big boy. About the only time that I crank up the big one most of the time is to run the well when I need to run the well. That sucker right there is 220, 240. Uh, it takes a lot of juice to run that. So... That's kind of what I'm getting into this morning. We got Eclipse. Let's... What are you doing, sweetheart? She has been all happy. Her and Ryder has been playing on the inside of the cabin today, but now she was ready to come out. Huh. And now she wants to play. Getting some of that energy. You want to you stick? Want to stick? Go. Might be a little big for her. She might pick that up and be like, nah, I'm good. To see if she gets it. Oh, she's getting it. She's getting so big, guys. So, so big. But she didn't want nothing to do with that big stick, huh? He was like, that's too big, huh? You want a smaller one? Come on. Go. That one's smaller for you. Come on. Come on, you gonna bring it to me? Nope. She don't really, really bring me the sticks back. She likes uh, her balls. Uh, one of my subscribers sent me some balls that's kind of rope balls or whatever, and she just absolutely loves them. Um, she's got like three of them out here that she'll bring to me every once in a while to kind of play with. So I went to the dentist yesterday. Whew. $700. You want to talk about hurting the pocket. But uh, I actually had to get a crown on one of my teeth. 
And what they did was the first step, they drilled it and all that and built it up and did their thing and made a temporary crown. Put that on and in three weeks I have to go back and get the permanent crown put on. But yeah, it cost me, well actually about $800. About $800 out of pocket and that's with dental insurance. Dental insurance is a joke. Um, out of $800, they paid $200. So, or out of a thousand, they paid 200 and I had to pay 800. They could at least split it with me. Come on. Could, could we go 50 50? Can we get a 50 50 up in here? I mean, come on. Yeah. So, and then when I go back in three weeks, I'm actually getting some more stuff done. That's going to cost me another $800. So, pretty much in one month, $1,600 on dental. Yeah. That's crazy. But, Got to keep the smile looking good. Got to keep the smile looking good. So it is what it is. I decided just to go ahead and get all of this done. So huh, I wasn't ready. And you know, kind of what prompted all of this was on my way back from Arkansas, um, I felt something hard in my mouth. And it was a piece of filling that fell out of my tooth. And that's why I went to the dentist originally. And kind of find out I needed a crown. But it always could be worse. I mean, luckily... I didn't need a root canal. He was worried yesterday there for a minute because he seen something when he was drilling and grilling up in there and thought and took more x-rays and thought maybe it was going to have to be a root canal. And I'm glad it wasn't because a root canal is even more money. Look how beautiful the cabin looks in the background, guys, with all those trees gone. Look at that. That is amazing. Woo-hoo! We've been putting some work on the mountain. Come on. And we got a lot more to go. Let me give you a little sneak peek of what's happening. Look how thick that is, guys. Look how thick that is. Right there's the big old pile of stuff that we just... Oh, hold on. Ah, there we go. Get my hand out. There's the big old pile of stuff that we just cut down and trimmed. But all of this is my next focus. All of that is getting cleared all the way to the clearing. Don't know if you'll be able to see it with the camera, but if you look right there, there's a clearing back there. That's where the power lines is. And right back there, in theory, is a pretty nice mountain view. And I really want that. To show from right there because right there where that window is whenever i do the renovation will actually be my master bedroom with a walkout porch right there where that roof is so if i can pull off a nice mountain view on this side where i wake up in the morning and i see a gorgeous mountain view and i can walk out on my deck and drink my monster or my coffee yeah i i think that's about as close as you can get to heaven on earth come on so I'm going to uh, try to make that happen. And then I also have to dig up those stumps. That one. I'm going to do something special with that one. But I also need to dig up that one, that one, and the other one on the other side of that tractor. So that's going to take some time. And those bigger uh, pine trees that we cut down in that video that I put out Sunday... Um, is going to be a challenge for old Uber in the back of right there because those are some big old suckers. But I think we're up for the task. Uber is a bad, bad girl now. Come on. Um, I've dug up some pretty big ones already. It's just going to take some time. But I definitely want those out of the yard. Um, I can't afford uh, to rent a stump grinder or anything like that. So I'm going to have to just dig them up with the backhoe. Thankfully, I'm fortunate enough to have a backhoe on my tractor. And will make my life a lot easier because they're way too close to the cabin for me to burn out and all of that. And also right now, we're in a burn ban. So there's no burning stumps right now anyways. So it is what it is. But I think we're going to get off here because it's starting to get later. And I need to get this stuff unloaded and the generator loaded up and get my butt there. And because uh, I still got work to do today. So I am glad that I got to hang out with you guys this morning. And I hope that y'all have a productive Tuesday. And wake up this morning. Get motivated. Do something on your bucket list that you've been putting off. 
And uh, don't forget, tomorrow we're going to go live on Come On Homesteading. And there is some epic, epic news. It's going to be the biggest live that Come On Homesteading has ever had. So get your sipping cream and your favorite cocktail and join me tomorrow night at 7 o'clock Central Time. And uh, make sure you join me there. Oh, yeah. There's one more thing. So I woke up this morning and I checked out Come On Homesteading. Anybody that's watching this channel right here, if you have not went to Come On Homesteading and it's subscribed and hit the notification bell, that is where all the work happens. I get a lot of people on here that says, oh, you just talk, 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 never work. This is my vlog channel. I don't work on this channel. If you want to see work, go to Come On Homesteading. That's where we get it in. But Come On Homesteading today hit 25,000 subscribers. You guys are amazing. I'm very humble. It uh, it amazes me. It, it, it shocks me that that many people um, would take the time to watch what I have going on here at Come On Mountain. And it really inspires me to just keep going harder and you know, just working real hard to put out the best content that I can and uh, to entertain you guys. So thank you very much. We had this channel hit 7,000 on Saturday, and now my main channel hit 25,000 all in the same week. That is epic. That is a huge, huge accomplishment, and it's all because of you guys, and I love every single one of y'all. So until we see each other again, guys, hey, hey, come on. Let's just keep it real.